And again, you know, I understand, and I do, I really understand how we are a product of, envi of our environments, but I also think lots about choices. Yeah. Just at a certain age, you've got to make decisions. At a certain age, you've got to put your big boy pants on and go, <laughs> yes, X, Y, and Z did happen to me, but now I have a choice whether to be my father or to go another. Precisely. And I think anything after that, when you start using your father as an excuse, it's yeah. simply that, an excuse. Yeah. You're just copping out. Okay. You don't want to face your own shit, so you blame it on somebody else, and that's the reason why I'm allowed to do it, because my dad did it. Yeah. That's garbage. <laughs> So why didn't kiss us? And that so what type of dad did you then turn out to be? <laughs> the opposite. I was always on the road, but I was as involved with my kids as I possibly could be. Okay. My kids, both of my kids have turned out incredibly well, but it's not because of me. In spite of you. <laughs> <laughs> See? See, some would say. <laughs> Robert Williams actually said that. Some no, it was uh, George Carlin said, I'm amazed my daughter's turned out so well yeah. in spite of all my efforts. <laughs> because, <laughs> because jokes aside, people will say that about me as well. But you know what? I've done the very best I can. I've always provided for them. Yeah. I gave them what they needed. Uh, in fact, sometimes too much so. Sometimes they would say, Dad, work a little less and be home a bit more. Yeah. Could you do that type yeah. of thing? So I was always doing what I thought I had to do to be the perfect dad. Give them the home. Give them the cars. Give them private schools. Do all those types of things, which I managed to do. And I also managed to stay very as involved as I possibly could. And I really was. I was 300% more involved than my dad was. Was I a perfect dad? No. But I really did try and do the best I could. My kids really were raised by a village, though. I think I've told you this before. My mom, my ex-mom-in-law, um, my brother, my, my brother-in-law, all these, everybody raised my, they, I had a group of eight or ten very strong human beings raising my kids. Right. So my kids have turned out amazingly well because of that. I had a part in it and I'll own that part because I'm proud of that part. But it wasn't just me and it wasn't just my ex-wife, by no means. Tertiary education or no tertiary education, do you think it's necessary? What advice would you give youngsters? If you'd asked me that question 20 years ago, I would have said absolutely. I would have said absolutely you've got to get a tertiary education. I think now if it's your natural inclination, if you get to, if you get to matric and your natural inclination is to go and further your skills as a doctor, as a dentist, as academically. a... Academically. Oh, academically. If you're built like that, I'm not. But I think if you are academically inclined, go and further that because we need those people. Yeah. We need the doctors. We need the lawyers. Do we need lawyers? We need those people. Let's not even have that conversation. I encourage anybody to be a lawyer. I was about, I don't know why I said that. Take it back. <laughs> but what I would do is I would say to me, if you know, but don't get one just because you're going to get one. So, so you must know quite a few people, I know I do, who yeah. have no tertiary education, but they are a success anyway. The whole thing is a lot of kids are finding now that the pressure is... Mm. What varsity are you going to? Where are you going to? What are you going to study? And, and I, no I'm, I'm like Mike Rowe of, 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 uh, no of uh, returning the favor and, and dirty no. jobs, who says that there's more honor and dignity in actually doing a hard day's work as a no. plumber or electrician or oh. digging holes. Every day. And it's as valuable as a person that they different levels of the spectrum. And, but we frown to hard work. We frown at people no. who don't work on computers and put pens in we their do. pockets. We do. So, so what I'm trying to get across is that the youngsters today, I, I wish somebody had told me that because you keep on thinking you're inferior yeah. because you don't have a BCom or LLB or whatever or the name is yeah. behind your thing. Yeah. But you find guys who yeah. run multi-billion rand organizations. Any I mean, you, you even look at, I mean, what's it? Microsoft, what's his name? Oh, well, he, he flunked out. Flunked out. If you look at all these guys who've actually made it, not saying that tertiary education is not good for you. Absolutely. But I love the way you put it there. If, if that's your bag, do it. go to your bag. Flunked but out. if you're not following yeah. that, don't think you're a lesser of a person because you don't have that academic thing. But isn't it really harking back to what we were talking about just now? You've got to find out who you are. Yeah. So the sooner you find out who you are, the sooner you're going to decide, should I go to varsity, should I go to varsity? I'm going to, just going to, I'm going to jump to a story quickly. I've got to tell you. My dad taught me a lot of very um, worldly wise things. But we were driving into a little town. We were on the road. I must have been 10 or 12 years old. I was going to a gig with my dad. And there was this oak <clears throat> up to his arms in Greece. Like this, in a car. Yeah. And, this, this, and I laughed at this oak. I laughed at him, yeah. Laughed at him. I said, check this football. I'm 12. What do I know? <laughs> Just my father hits anchors, pulls the car to the side of the road. He says, what? What? What did he just say about that oak? I said, that football, working on cars for a living, he's dirty all the time. Can you do that? No. He said, shut up. He said, don't you ever do that again. That person's role in this life, in this world, is as important, if not more, than yours. So know your place. And I just thought, geez, you know what, eh? Yes, sir. I can't fix cars, eh? Mm. But I've got a broken down car when I'm 23 years old. I'm going to call this, eh? Mm. 
So everybody's got their own value. It's a different value, but there's that perceived value that I had as a 12-year-old that he was worth less. Based on society. Based on society's expectations of you. Yeah. So I now go, I now see Oaks. I've got a mate at gym. Owns a plumbing company. He's doing better than all of us, my boot. All of us. Well, he's in the shit, but yeah. he's making money. <laughs> <Exactly. yeah. laughs> but I also know very close to him. My boot works for a guy who's got, no, who's got him a chick. He's got a, you, you know, Helen, mm. but a usually successful business. Mm. You know what? We can, I can, we, you and I both, can talk about a lot of guys and I think as the world changes to do what we're doing now and the way the world's changing and allowing you to do different things and our reach and our scope is so much greater than it ever was before guys who can start something from nothing in a garage and turn that into something yeah. those are the guys who we need those guys and I sometimes think getting a, a structured tertiary education stymies that because yeah. it stops you thinking like a renegade it stops you thinking like a like a cowboy because I still think to, to achieve anything in this world, you've got to be a little bit dangerous and you've got to take a few chances. You know, you've got to, you've got to be flying kind of close to the wind, otherwise no one's really going to take notice. Mm. You've got to be a little bit, do you understand what I'm yeah, saying? Without, being, without thinking about it too much, you've got to be taking a few chances. And that guy there in the garage turned into Bill Gates.